Hello everyone and welcome to episode 12 of the One Team Ayrshire podcast. We're back after a couple of busy months but the season has not stopped or gone away and it's been full steam ahead for Kilmarnock and everything surrounding Rugby Park. We'll be back tonight to talk through our defeat to St Johnson uh, in midweek and then the victory over Motherwell, much needed victory over Motherwell on Saturday. We'll look ahead to the uh, Hibs game at the weekend, uh, take a look at some of the questions we posted on uh, Twitter or X, if you will, and have a general discussion about a couple of things, including Derek McInnes winning Manager of the Month for October. But uh, without further ado, uh, it's me, Adam Wine, uh, joined just tonight by Andrew Milligan. Uh, good evening, Andrew. Yeah, good evening. Good to be back. Absolutely. I know Kieran tonight, he's away... Uh, and his part-time job is a Liam Donnelly doppelganger tonight, I think. I think he's doing a party at the garage. Uh, <laughs> they, they specifically wanted a, a Liam Donnelly lookalike, so Kieran's away that for that bad. tonight. So um, Unfortunately, he can't join us, but um, I'm sure we'll be back next week uh, with all his usual uh, insight that we that we love and his predictions, including uh, the one from earlier in the season where he thought we, we were going to go unbeaten uh, after beating Rangers and Celtic, how wrong uh, we were with that one. Uh, but we've we'll passed that. Times have changed. Uh, no longer we're on a seven-game unbeaten run, uh, and we're on a run of three wins in four, which is not too bad, uh, certainly for Kilmarnock's standard, and we hope that continues. But before we go uh, into it, uh, all of us here, uh, as we did on Saturday in the comments, I just want to say, uh, send our condolences to the, the family and friends of uh, Craig Benson and Alex Swift, two Kilmarnock fans who... Uh, sadly passed away during the, the last uh, week and it was a lovely uh, minute's applause wasn't it, Andrew for, for Craig on, uh, on Saturday in the third minute and uh, you know a couple of Kelly fans there's not many Kelly fans about so um, when two you know such such big personalities from the fan base maybe someone you've never people you've never met or interacted with but you know well known people and uh, always sad isn't it but really good on Saturday to see everyone joining in with it no, absolutely. That is like in sad times like this, it is some it is always nice to see people come together in moments like that at games, um, you know, as to pay their respects to to the ones we've sadly lost. Um, and as you say, perhaps not known personally, but certainly big parts of the community. Um, and certainly known personally by a lot of people. Um, so definitely, yeah, sad times, but nice to see those people pay their respects on the game on Saturday. Absolutely, but uh, before uh, that game on Saturday, a couple of days before. Um, we our, our away curse um, continued, having gone up to Perth uh, to take on St Johnson, who hadn't won uh, all season yet. And you know, knowing Kilmarnock, we were we were saying the jokes beforehand. You know, oh well, that'll be St Johnson getting their first win then, because Kilmarnock always, uh, you know, give it easy to, to teams that are in need of a win. And uh, you know, I, I think there was a fear that it was going to happen, but what we didn't expect was to lose two goals inside the opening seven minutes. And uh, although we there was a wee bit of a comeback, never really materialised and, and probably didn't really deserve to get out of the game, which I guess was really disappointing because, as you say, they were bottom of the league, still are bottom of the league, you know, they were without a win at that point, looked really down and out, caretaker manager. It was there for Kumar to go and get that first away win of the season, something that we badly, badly needed and uh, the players really faltered. Yeah, exactly. I mean, with a start like that, where you can see two and seven minutes, you leave yourself with pretty much no chances to get back into the game. And unfortunately, we kind of almost predicted, it, didn't we, on Sunday when we were watching the Aberdeen game at Rugby Park and the news comes through that they sacked Stephen McLean. You go, oh no, here's, you know, could, could we have even worse timing? Um, you know, them sacking their manager days before we go and face them. And right enough, you know, they were up from it right from the start and they got their two quick goals. and come out and just completely shoot themselves in the foot um, by giving away those two early goals and it's an absolute mountain to climb from there and obviously as you say you know come on keep to get that goal back at the you know beginning of the second half but you hope that would have maybe perhaps sparked some sort of comeback but it wasn't to be and you know it did kind of feel written in the stars into it that that team as you say looking for their first victory of the season trust come out to come along you know and be able to give you that um and you know the disastrous waveform continues, unfortunately. And just as a matter of time, of course, we'll come back. Uh, we'll look forward to this weekend's game um, shortly. But it just comes back to that: where is that you know first league uh, one away from home this season going to come from? Uh, and you would hope sooner rather than later. You don't want to repeat the last season where you're into the new year, reaching the end of the season, and you've still not got that first away win yet. So. It would be nice to get that wrapped up uh, sooner rather than later. We're hoping it was last uh, Wednesday. It wasn't to be, unfortunately. Can it be this Sunday instead? Hopefully so. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I think the most frustrating thing for for those of us who were up there is that, you know, we we went up with positivity because of the, the past two games, you know, played so well, relatively comfortably beaten, you know, Aberdeen and, and, and Livingston the week before. And then to turn in that performance, especially in the first 10 minutes, but even just the general performance, even when St. Johnson went down to 10 men, you know, you didn't really see Kumara getting the goal back and he did or getting two goals back to, to win the game. Yes, we got the one just after half time, but it was still a real slog and it just didn't look like it was ever going to happen. It, it just seems like, you know, ever since Derek McInnes came in, we've just never really got a run of fixtures, you know, a run of games, a run of good results going, have we? I mean, the guys at the, the Forever Ever podcast alluded to this in, in today's podcast as well, that it always just seems like the next loss is just around the corner. We can never seem to string together three, four wins. It's always, you know, maybe two victories and then, you know, a defeat and it seems like a setback and, and the sort of positivity goes away. You know, there's just never been a run of games where it's just, you know, maybe three or four wins on the bounce that can really, you know, generate some positivity in the fan base. No, absolutely. That's the most frustrating thing about it, isn't it? That you just can never seem to put a run together. And, you know, we're sitting watching the Aberdeen game, hoping that, you know, these, these next two games are away to St. Johnson who haven't won all week the season and then home to Motherwell who, you know, are, were on a poor run. You know, you ha- highlight those two games, hope for a match of six points. All of a sudden, you're in a great position. You're in this great run of form. Obviously, we're still in a good position now, but because we've got that victory last Wednesday, uh, you know, up in Perth, the difference it could have made, you know, as you're sitting, trying to get that bit of consistency, it's something we've not seen um, for a while. And, you know, especially under Derek McInnes, we've never had that consistency. As you, as you're completely right, you know, that, that, loss, that, that next loss always does seem around the corner, unfortunately, no matter how well Kilmarnock are performing, you just never know, you know, from week to week, from game to game, which Kilmarnock says is going to turn up. You have the great performance against Aberdeen, then a matter of days later, you turn up with that performance against St. Johnson. So it just shows, you know, Kilmarnock's real lack of consistency. It's not punished them too much. Of course, still sitting in a nice position in the league table at the moment. But if Kilmarnock can find that consistency, it just shows where Kilmarnock could actually end up this season. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we didn't really have much time to, to dwell on that loss. You know, Motherwell on the Saturday... You know, we're obviously there at Rugby Park. Not a great game, not a classic. Um, you know, two teams that, that probably weren't playing at their best. You would have to say Motherwell pretty poor. Kilmarnock, don't think they, they hit the heights of, of the games, the, the two home games before. But we probably just about did enough to win, I think, was it the consensus from all of us on the, the commentary. You know, we had the blow with um, Kerr Vassell getting injured, um, obviously, in his camera and having to come in. And, and uh, surprisingly, he proved to be the... The match winner with I think only his, his fourth ever sort of senior goal in Achilles shirt. I mean, it certainly wasn't one that we're going to remember for a, a long time. But you know, these kind of victories that maybe we wouldn't have got, you know, last season or 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 the relegation season or even the season, you know, the, the season in the championship, we seem to be getting, you know, at the moment, um, you know, just grinding out that one 0 win against a, a pretty stubborn uh, Millwall side. No, absolutely. We can rely on our home form um, for the time being to get us those results. And that proved again on Saturday, as you say, certainly far from the most entertaining game. Not one we'll be rushing to watch back anytime soon. But the main thing is we were able to get those three points. Um, and as you say, I think definitely just about edged it in terms of deserving those three points over Motherwell, who were uh, very poor in the, uh, on Saturday. But, you know, I think overall, I mean, as you say, you get that big blow with Kevin Sell having to go off injured in the first half and you wonder who's Derek McInnes going to call on is it going to be Ennis Cameron or is it going to be Andy Dallas and perhaps you would have expected Andy Dallas with it being you know him being the transfer deadline signing and he's never really had a I mean he's had, he's had a few minutes here and there but nothing um, you know extended and that was a chance to give him an extended run but he went with Ennis Cameron and you know what to be fair to him it, it totally paid off uh, you know, Cameron putting a great performance. Uh, obviously, as you say, gets his goal as well, and was thoroughly deserved of that goal's performance. You know, throughout and as soon as he came on, right up until the end of the game, was well. It uh, was you know a really good performance, and definitely probably between him and Robbie G's for man of the match at come the end of the game. And you got to say he's, he's made a you know a claim now to try and you know break into the team. Uh, obviously, it depends on. Uh, Vassell's injury if we're back this weekend or not but credit to Ennis Cameron of course he comes under a lot of criticism at times never for his efforts you can never fault that um, but certainly you know his hold up play his flick-ons you know winning those aerial battles um, and then even top it up with a goal on Saturday can't 
uh, can play about that. But yeah, certainly won't be rushing back to watch the game on Saturday, but it was certainly a very important three points because if Kamara were to get those three points, you know, starts, you know, getting the doubts again. But so it was important to bounce back um, following that defeat. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you know, you mentioned Robbie D's in particular there was another sort of change in in shape or, or style for Kamara, that, that back to the back four. Um, with four centre backs, which which sounds crazy to anyone outside, you know, Kumaric circles, but uh, but you know, it, it seemed to work again. Robbie D's on on the left, um, at left back, and and Joe Wright of all people, at, at right back with Mayo and Finlay in the middle. He, you know, we still don't seem to have that settled. You know, Derek McKenzie doesn't seem to quite know what he wants to do. Obviously, and Dabba being injured doesn't help with that, and he could be back for for Saturday. But maybe the the, the four wasn't really what we expected, but. Um, it did seem to work, and and D's in particular, um, was a standout. But if Ndaba was to come back in, D's would probably be the one that would end up getting dropped. We guess. Yeah, exactly. It probably would be. Um, which would seem a bit harsh after his performance at the weekend. Um, it certainly is a strange one, as you say, four centre backs. Um, you know, playing that back four, obviously Joe Wright probably wouldn't traditionally be the right back. Um, but I think with the height they had out there with Theo Bear, they decided to put him in at right back instead of um, Lewis Mayo, who maybe would play there more traditionally. But, you know, as you say, a certain position that um, isn't Robbie D's natural position there, but he suited it really well. And I think it's obviously not the first time we've played that. Um, I'm not sure it's worked as well for us in the past as it did uh, on Saturday, but I think it worked well. Um, and as you say, Robbie D's uh, was in contention for man of the match um, due to that performance. And as you say, it will be interesting to see come uh, Sunday Easter Road it's our Saturday rather Easter Road that if um, and Dava is back from his injury will he come straight back into the team I think he's been you know a really important player for Kamara this season um, but as you say then that would mean Robbie D's drops out and is that fair after his performance on Saturday I'm not too sure so it's definitely it would be a tough call for Derek McInnes if Kamara and Dava is fit um, for the game of the weekend um, if not then I suppose that's a problem to deal with after the international break but um, certainly will be an interesting one to see what they go with um, I'm too honest. I'm not too sure what I would do myself um, in that position. Yeah, well, that is one of the questions that we put people on X, and we'll come to that in just a couple of minutes. Before we do, we'll go into the the Hibs game on on Saturday and up at Easter Road. Never been a happy hunting ground for for Kelly. You know, we, we've we've got such a good record on the other side of the city um, against Hearts, but the 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 form at Hibs is 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 not great to say the least. I, I can't really remember. I've not got a, bit, a good memory of the best times anyway, but I can't really remember it. any real victories of, of note. Um, you know, at Hibs, I can remember some memorable games. You know, the, the last-minute equaliser from, from Del Fabro a couple of years ago. Um, there, there was a game that was maybe 5-2 or 5-3. Chris Boyd scored a, a, a brilliant free kick, but we just don't seem to get, you know, many wins there. And an and away win is something that, as we touched on earlier, we really need because it, it, although we got a few at the, the end of last season, I, I think it's still about four away wins and, and maybe twenty something games um, for for Derek McInnes. Um and we don't want this to become an issue again this season, don't we? You know, we got those few at the end of last season to, to mean that we didn't go through the whole season without an away win, and we don't want it, that to start again. And then every week you're going, you know, every second week you're going away from home, going. Well, we're going to lose again, aren't we? Because we're away from home. You don't want that mentality to set in. No, absolutely, you don't. And as you say, parts of the last season we're going to go the whole year without it. And thankfully, we didn't. Otherwise, we wouldn't have uh, stayed up in the end. But you know, as you say, that's not something we want to carry over. We were hoping to have gotten a way win by now. Um, you know, of course, breaking into November and um, to not have that way win is a bit worrying. It's not certainly anything you want to repeat from last year. You know how difficult it can be once. The players get into that almost familiarity with losing away from home, um, or at least not winning. And then it, it does become a problem. So Kamar wants to eradicate that as quickly as possible. Not necessarily easy to do so. Easter Road, uh, you know, as you say, not a happy hunting ground um, as of late for Kamar. But hopefully that can turn around on Sunday. You're not too sure what you're going to get with a Nick Montgomery side at the moment. Um, of course, we were his opponents for his first game uh, at Rugby Park and. You know, they were 2 0 up when we came back and drew 2 2. And since then, they've really had a mixed bag of results um, away from home and at Easter Road as well. So you're really not sure what head side you're going to get on, um, you know, from game to game. You're not sure what Kamara side you're going to get from game to game either, to be fair. So 
it really depend on what team turns up um, for both sides uh, at the weekend. And you got to hope it's, it will become hard to come out on top. But I've got to say, um, you can't be too overly confident and start predicting victories um, for that game because it won't be too straightforward. But hopefully, Kamark are able to sneak it because um, that away victory is so important to get sooner rather than later. And you don't want to go into an international break and come back from that still looking for that first victory away from home. Yeah, absolutely. I think even you know even a point from this game would be would be decent for for Kelly. I mean, uh, as we say, such a tough place to go. Don't really get many points from there all too often, and and you're having to get a point from there. As you say, you, you never know what hips are going to turn up. I mean, they played Aberdeen in the, in, in the cup semi final on Saturday and uh, got put out. You know, so um, it just goes to show you, um, you know, you'd never quite know what you're going to get with them. But um, you know, we'll wait and see how that. How that all goes, um, and we'll be up there, uh, or I'll be up there, obviously, to uh, to see uh, how that goes, and hopefully, a good back and from the Kamara fans as well. But just before we finish, we'll go into the uh, the questions on uh, egg. Just a couple of, of sort of pointers we put out. Um, should Corey and Dava come back into the uh, the squad? Obviously, I meant the the start eleven, but I didn't phrase it particularly well, so uh, that really didn't work out. Um, does Ennis Cameron deserve you know another game? Does he deserve to? Uh, to, to start on, on Saturday um, you know whether Kyle Vassell is, is fit or not could he start in place of Watkins who um, you know I don't think has been although he had a hand in the goal um, on Saturday I, I, I don't think was great on Wednesday and maybe didn't quite get there on Saturday um, as well um, and then just when will that away win uh, come so Laurie Finlayson obviously friend of uh, the podcast said uh, obviously Dab will be back in the squad but whether he starts ahead of uh, Robbie Dees, as we said, that's sort of the the real battle there, isn't it, for that kind of position? Uh, that will be a, a different matter. Um, and he says, Ennis has done himself no harm at all. Um, doesn't deserve to be dropped, but Vassell has been excellent of late. So it's you know how you see that going. You would imagine that if Kel Vassell is fit, he probably would come back in. You know, he scored four goals in the last four games. Seems to have refound his, his form and his, his shooting boots. So. Um, you would imagine he would come back in, um, but obviously, as Cameron, you know, could play a part off the bench um, as he did on Saturday. Uh, Matt zero uh, seven six eight said, uh, and Dava should come back into the squad, um, offer something extra that others in that position can, which we've certainly seen this season. Uh, was certainly excellent in the first two games uh, against Rangers and Celtic. Um, and does Ennis deserve another game? Still not remotely convinced by him. One decent seventy minutes in years isn't enough for me. So what do you think of those two then, Andrew? You touched on a wee bit earlier, but you know the Daba or, or Dee's thing is is one um, sort of match up there who should come in, and then Ennis Cameron against Kyle Vassell. What would you do if you were Derek McInnes? Yeah, I think um, thinking on it a bit more, I would lean towards bringing Corey and Daba back in if he was fit enough. Um, it's also one you've got to try and strike a balance with. That's two injuries already he's already had this season. We're only at the start of November, so it's not one you want to. Rush back if he's not going to be a hundred percent ready to go. You know, there's no harm in you know taking that. You know, being extra cautious with him and just saying, right, let's just wait till after the international break. Um, you know, you don't want to rush him back again and then it aggravates another injury. Was as we say, over here too already this season, so don't want to have any more when he is such an important player and you can see you know how much he adds to the team when he's there. But if he is a hundred percent, um, and there's definitely no risk. Uh, surrounding his inclusion, then I'd be happy to see him come back into the team. And in terms of as Cameron, I've got to say, yeah, if Kevin Sells fit, he comes back in, he's club captain, he's on a good goal scoring run. Um, and I think him and Watkins do show signs at times um, of striking up a good partnership. So I think those two uh, at Easter Road would um, be the partnership I'd go for. However, of course, if the cell is not fit enough, then um, as Cameron, it would be up with Marley Watkins for me. Um, and I just I say, obviously, uh, that final comment maybe a little bit harsh saying um you know a good seventy minutes uh, over the space of however many years um you know while it's not too far from the truth um it is maybe a little bit harsh and you know he does get a lot of critics at times um but you know certainly you're not gonna uh, I don't think he's gonna keep Kelvin Sell out of the team um anytime soon as Kelvin Sell is fit enough. Absolutely, and these are the decisions that are going to be made by the man that we're going to come on to next, Derek McInnes, um, was announced uh, yesterday, I think it was, that he's won uh, Manager of uh, the Month for October, which is fantastic. Um, I think Steve Clark maybe only got that 
a couple of times and no other Matt Kelly manager that I can recollect has ever has ever won. It could be wrong in that one, but um nice to see the photo of, of Derek with his his back group staff. Um, usually a bit of a curse, usually when you win manager of the month, you usually go until lose your next game. Uh, so let's hope that's not true. Uh, otherwise there's no point in us all going up on Saturday. Um but there's been still a bit this, this discussion every week about Derek McKenna says in there and you know, where do Kelly fans stand? You know, what's the sort of general feeling? Um, you know, in the fan base, you know, sort of approaching, I think, two years now um in the job. Where where do we stand on him? Obviously, you know, he, he he's done the sort of major things, got us promoted, you know, kept us up last year, albeit on the last day and and only just, but that was a remit. We do look better this year. Seems like we're hopefully not going to be in any kind of danger of, of relegation. Um, you know, on the other hand, there's still this away record, which is just that that sort of hoodoo that just won't go away, and that's always going to tie him back for now until it gets sorted. And that sort of thing we were talking about earlier, where it seems like the next setback is just you know always around the corner. You know, if we have two good games, then there's going to be a bad game next. You know, um, you know, I think that the general feeling in the fan base is is growing positivity for for Derek McInnes. I think even the most ardent. Um, you know, people who, who didn't agree with his appointment or or didn't want him to go last year are slowly coming around. But you know, all it takes is, as we've seen, you'll win away a loss or a couple of losses, and, and that all comes right back. So, um, you know, what, where do you kind of see it at the moment? What is your sort of take on on McInnes and how the job that he's doing? Just one quick pointer before we get messages in from listeners. Um, of course, I think Angelo Alesso, he, he won Manager of the Month in October uh, yeah, could be right, just and then got he, sacked yeah. the very next month. Uh, so just to see if any listeners missing and saying we forgot uh, about Alessio. But no, in terms of Derek McInnes, um, yeah, it's always been a tricky one, hasn't it? Ever since you know his um, first season, ever since his arrival, to be honest, he's always never really had 100% support of the fan base for a multitude of reasons. Um, I think one of the main reasons has got to be that uh, we've never really had a run of a great run of form. You know, as you say, that next loss always seems around the corner. I think that does not help the manager support at all because as soon as you know the doubters start to turn a little bit and go, oh, yeah, you know, we are becoming supporters of McInnes, the next loss comes and then all of a sudden it's, oh yeah, um, you know, straight back on the bandwagon of uh, he's not good enough. So it certainly is a difficult one. Kamara fans have always been pretty um, divided at times throughout um, his tenure and I've got to say it's, it's good to see him get manager of the month I, I forgot that um, you know he would even be a contender for that to be honest we've obviously got the two wins um, in the month of October so it's good to see him win it hopefully as you say it's not uh, going to end up being a curse but I think it is a different one if he can get a run of games going um, and get a good bit of form as you say if sort out of that away record and I think you know the fans could really take to him um, you know, in terms of as a whole a collective, um, which I think could only be a positive for the club um, if everyone is behind them. It's understandable why not everyone is. It's understandable why he's got his doubters. He's certainly shown at times, um, you know, whether it be through a lack of subs, you know, making the wrong subs, subs at the wrong time, not sub, not subbing players at times, you know, um, just substitutes in general. Sometimes even, um, you know, at points last season it became a tombolo with the start 11s. Um, which are to a lot of fans as well. So it has certainly been, you know, he's not helped himself at times um, in terms of getting full backing of the uh, of the fans. But I think, as you say, this at the point, you know, the start of this season is probably the closest we've got to, um, you know, getting a, a good support behind um, McInnes. And I think, you know, I'm not too sure, even if, obviously, it won't be sat any time soon, but even if it was, um, I'm not too sure where you'd go for a replacement. Um, he's probably, you know, the best you're gonna have around at the, at the moment. Um, so I definitely think it's one that, um, I I hope long term does work out for Kilmarnock. You know, we have had mixed bags, so I'm hoping if we can sort out the form and put a bit of consistency together, get that away form um, sorted, where you can go on runs of five unbeaten, six unbeaten, um, you know, four wins in the bounce, whatever it may be, um. You know, I think there could be a real support behind them, um, which can only benefit the club. Absolutely, and uh, you know, I think there is a real appetite there for for stability among among the fan base. You know, for for the manager, you know, going through that that miracle round of Alessio and Dyer and uh, Ray, you know, just wasn't healthy at all for for the club. And 
um, you know, would like McInnes to be here long term. And uh, although some people may still have their doubts, I think, as we say, the positivity is is growing. And if we can have a good season and, and improve the away form, then it will certainly go from there as well. But uh, I think that'll be all for uh, tonight. Hopefully we'll have even more positivity uh, to look forward to uh, next week's podcast. Hopefully a good result up at Easter Road. I'll be there uh, with all the usual Twitter updates. Uh, and myself, Andrew, and hopefully Kieran will be back next week uh, for the usual podcast. Uh, in terms of the next commentary uh, for HBSA, that will not be until December. We are hoping to be on uh, Kelly TV duties uh, for the Hearts at Home and Ross County away games. We'll hopefully have some more details for you on that uh, in next week's episode. Uh, and we can hopefully get you to tune in uh, and support Kelly TV for those two games uh, while we're on there as well. My well, thanks to Andrew for joining me tonight. Yeah, thanks very much. Good to be back. Hopefully um, we can make it more of a weekly thing again and uh, get back into this bit of it. Absolutely. And uh, hopefully some positive results to go along with it as well. So thanks very much, everyone, for watching and listening. And uh, we'll see you for the next episode. Goodbye.